The next question that I want us to have a look at was part E, so read it with me. It says, given that X and Y are two unequal, positive, real numbers. Okay, so there's a lot of information already just packed into those few words. Uh, show that, my laser point is still not working, that the average of the squares of X and Y, ooh, okay, that's a lot. The average of the squares of X and Y is greater than the square of the average of x and y. Okay, average of the squares is greater than the square of the average. Okay, feels a bit like AM, GM inequality-esque, um, and it is related to that, but it is not exactly the same because, um, yeah, the squares are a little bit different. Okay, so how do we deal with this, with this proof question uh, and this inequality? Okay, let's have a look. The first thing, and this is part E that I'm doing at the moment, so I'll just write that down. The first thing is I need to convert all of that verbal language into um, an algebraic inequality because then I can start manipulating it, right? So the first thing the question said was about the, um, the sum, sorry, the average of the squares. The average of the squares. So x squared plus y squared when you want to find the average of those two numbers, you add them and then you divide by two. So that is the average of the squares. And then what we want to do is square the average. So that's taking the average between x and y is x plus y on two. So that's x plus y on two. And then we need to take that whole thing, the entire average and square it, right? Now what we've been, let's just put this in here. What we've been asked to prove, so I'll write RTP, required to prove, is that the first expression is greater than the second expression. This is what I'm after. So one of the classic ways when you've got all these squares going on, right, um, a classic thing is to prove, well, can I use the properties of the squares algebraically um, to show that I'm above zero or less than zero, or those kinds of things. So I'm going to pull out a classic trick and just get everything over to one side, make it greater than or lesser than zero, and then see if I can prove that using the properties of squares. So you can see here if I am exceptional lazy, just grab this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to imagine subtracting that right hand term from both sides so that leaves me zero on the right hand side. This is what I'm going to try and work on, right? So as my proof I'm going to consider, let's zoom in, zoom out rather, the left hand side. The left hand side is going to be equal to all of this, like so. And what I want to do, I guess, is take this pair of fractions and sort of smoosh them together in a way that I get squares out for everything. Um, and hopefully those squares will be, enable me to say, well, the whole thing is going to be greater than or equal to, um, or not greater than or equal to, just strictly greater than zero. And that's actually going to be a bit of a sneaky thing, which we struggled to do. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's work on combining this together. You can see here, um, this right-hand fraction, it's going to be sort of uh, x plus y all squared on 4, so um, I might as well sort of work towards getting common denominators, right? So this is going to be equal to 2x squared plus 2y squared take away, um, and then here comes the x plus y all squared, it'll be x squared plus 2xy plus y squared, and all of that is being divided by 4. So in fact, rather than draw some big enormous fraction, I'm a bit lazy to do that, so I'm just going to say all of that divided by Four. Happy times. You can see here, I'm clearly going to get some um, like terms here. So there's my x squareds, and there are my y squareds. So what am I going to end up with? I'm going to have, I don't need to be per brackets anymore, um, just a single x squared, just a single y squared, and then I've got, just watch out for it, a minus 2xy from that divided by 4. Now hopefully you recognize this result because you can say, wait, I can factorize this thing. This is a binomial that has been squared, right? Because it's this, this squared, this squared, and then double the product in the middle, right? So this is clearly just going to be x minus y all squared divided by 4. Do I have what I need? Well, I think I'm pretty much there. I just need to put a little bit of extra um, requirement here, right? Is this going to be greater than zero? Because that, that's what I want, as you can see. The answer is yes, it is. But I need to provide the reasoning for that. Um, reasoning number one, okay? If I can say um, x and y are real, which I know from the question, therefore I know that this thing has to be non-negative. So therefore it's greater than or equal to zero. That's a plus. Um, so I'm going to say, but x and y are real. So therefore that tells me that x minus y all squared, the smallest it can be is zero, right? 
However, I don't want this thing to be equal to zero because then I would need to have, this is wrong so don't write it, um, I'd have to have a boundary included there and that's not what I've been required to prove. So if that's what I don't want, I actually need more information. It's not enough that they're just real numbers. So let's go back to the question and see if it gives any clues. What are those things that I uh, underlined? It said, given that X and Y are two unequal positive real numbers. So I've already appealed to the fact that they're real, that was good but not enough. The extra piece of information I need is that they're unequal. Unequal. So I've underlined that in red, so let's bring that over here and say, and um, X and y are not equal, so x can't equal y, which means this x minus y that I've got up in here, right, that has to be not equal to zero. So therefore, when you square it, because they're different numbers, right, um, you still can't be equal to zero. So you can see what this tells you is that you're greater than or equal to zero, equal to zero but what this tells you is I can exclude the zero, okay? So therefore, I can say, Ta-da, the left-hand side has to be not just greater than or equal to, but strictly greater than zero. So therefore, um, i.e., I've got this result here, like so. That was the left-hand side. It's greater than or equal to zero. And wow, I'm being so lazy today. Um, therefore, I can just add that uh, x plus y all squared to both sides um, to the right-hand side, or to both sides. And that's the result that I was required to prove. So. There you go, I'm finished. Um, the reason I really wanted to highlight this question is because this sequence of logic here was very, very poorly done. Um, students knew that they had to kind of go in this direction, but they just kind of fudged it. Um, it's not dissimilar to this question here where we got a velocity function which had a plus or minus and people were like, uh, I'll just choose the positive one because it's convenient to me. Um, no, you can't just choose one because it's convenient. You actually have to provide the reasoning that goes underneath it. So please be really, really careful.